Okay, welcome back. We're going to be making a uh, panel functionality. Keep in mind, this is not an AI tutorial, so the second player will not move by itself. We're essentially just making it so two people can play on a keyboard. So W and S will control the player one, and the up arrow and down arrow will control player two. So before we do that, we're going to name the cube. So we're, you can either click on cube or click on the paddle on the left here, and we're going to name this player one. And the same thing almost for the other paddle, we're going to name it player two. Great. So now we're going to want to make a script. If you've ever coded before, we're using C sharp, we want to do create C sharp script. And then we're going to call this player. Oops, almost put so player one. Make sure it's one word. That's kind of important a little bit. And then we're going to double click to open up this script. Once you have that open, Unity comes with uh, a basic set of rules that uh, an API that it comes with. So it's using the Unity engine currently and a ton of other stuff I don't really know, but I know it's using the Unity engine. That's important and it comes with all of the functions. So it's important to have U Unity engine here unless you're working with classes, which it still um, uses the Unity engine from the parent class, but that's not important for now. So we're going to create some variables, right? So first let's, uh, well, I mean, it's important to keep it. So let, let me explain some things here. So you have two functions, you have void start and void update. Start is called at the very start of the game when everything is initialized when it, or initializing. So basically when the game starts, it does it once at the beginning of the game. Update happens essentially as it says, once for, per frame. So basically if you want something to constantly check for something, like maybe you constantly want to check if the player is being damaged or not, if the player is jumping or not, if uh, an enemy is able to shoot or not. Basically, if you want to keep track of something constantly or you want something to happen constantly, you would put it in the update. There's fixed update, which has to do more with physics, but we're not going to worry about that today. So we're going to make some variables. We have two variables for this. We have a public. Public means you're, uh, it can be accessed by other scripts in Unity, and it, can also, it also shows up in the inspector for, as a component, because when you attach a script, it becomes a new component, not unlike the transformation component on every single object in 3D space. We're gonna call it a float, which just means it's a number that can use decimals, and we're gonna call this speed. This is the speed of the paddle. We're gonna create a new variable. We're gonna call it public rigid body RB. What a rigid body is, oopsie daisy. Rigid body essentially means that a object can use physics and can interact with colliders, which means it detects collision. Um, that's obviously a more watered down version of it, but essentially when you attach a rigid body to an object, it means it can have physics based off Unity's physics engine. So, so void start. We have, we've created a rigid body and we called it RB. But if we put it on the script, it doesn't actually know what that rigid body is. It just knows that it wants one. It has one, but it's not actually attached. So basically, we're going to use this script in the start and this function to look for it. So we're going to do RB, which is the rigid body, equals get component. And then we're going to do the arrow brackets, rigid body, and then two parentheses, and then a semicolon. So what is what's this doing? Uh, what this is doing is essentially looking on the object it's attached to at the very start of the game for a rigid body. And once it finds it, it sets the variable of our rigid body RB to the uh, object's rigid body. So it's physics, how it interacts with physics. That allows us to push it around, change its speed, allows us to change its physics, essentially. Remember to hit control save, always important to save. So now what do we want? To do in the update? What do we want to, want to constantly check for? We want to check for the movement whenever a player is pressing a key down. So since we said we want the player to um, hit W and S to move the paddle around, 
we're going to make a few if statements. So we're going to do if input dot get key. This means whenever it's held down, there's get key down, which is just one the singular instance when the button is down and get key up when the key is lifted. But we're going to use get key key code because we want to figure out what key you want dot w. So, so key code w is just defining which keystroke you want. And we're going to do some open brackets here. And we're going to do rb, which is the rigid body dot velocity. You can do an add force, but that makes things feel like it's on ice. Velocity just kind of sets it the physics to a constant speed. So equals new vector three. Vector threes are a bit weird. If you have more questions on vector threes, you can ask me. But essentially what it is is the, the transformation and direction and movement of an object. It's odd, but we'll get into that later, maybe. So we're going to set. So now we have to set an x, y, and z coordinate, kind of like a point on a graph, how there's an x and y. Now we're setting x, y, and z because it's in 3D space. So if we look back at our project, that's not it. Here it is. We know that we know that we want it to move up and down on the z axis. See? So we want it to only affect. I'm sorry. Let me just get this up. We want it to only affect the z axis. So we know that it does, wants to move zero f just because it's a float. Well, you can do zero. It's fine. Uh, zero on the y axis. So we don't want it. Basically, we don't want to move towards the camera. I don't want to move towards the other player. And then we're gonna set the z axis. Uh, direction to speed. So this will affect how so basically, when you change speed, it affects how fast the paddle is going. Now that we have that, that's all you need to do for that hotkey, we're going to do an else if statement, input, oops, input dot get key, key code, oops, daisy, dot s, same thing, we can take it, copy this, oops, and then we're going to set speed to negative speed. Now we have an else statement. So whenever there's nothing being pressed, there's a more efficient way of doing this, but this is how we're doing it today. We're going to set speed to just zero. So now, roll S to save it, because if you don't save, it won't, uh, it won't do any of your changes in the game. So it's important to save your code. So we go back to the game. Now that we have the script, we're going to attach it to player one. Now, but now that it has, now that it's here, we need to add a rigid body. So, yep. So if you go to add component in the search bar, you're going to look up R I G I rigid body, and we're going to make sure it uses doesn't use gravity, so it doesn't just plop down onto the board. And then we're going to create some constraints here. So we know that we don't want it to move on the x axis. We don't want it to move on the y axis. We only want it to move on the z-axis. We also know that we don't want it to rotate whatsoever, so we're going to freeze the rotation, right? And oh, let me explain a little bit. So with rigid body, you can adjust the mass, drag, angular drag. But since we're not worrying about any physics really too much in this, that's not important. We all, you just need to know that you basically need to leave the z position unfreezed. So we play the game now. Oops, that's right. No speed, didn't give it speed. So we're gonna set the speed to something small right now, like three, just to test it out. And you can see that it's moving, see? And it stops when you're not holding a key. Yeah, so that's a bit slow. So we are going to, what did I set it? We're going to set it to eight. That sounds good, let's set it to eight. There we go. That's a that's a good fair speed. We we'll want the player to miss. So now, now we want to do the same thing for player two. So hold on. Let let's rename this because I accidentally put a capital L here. Whoops. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a C sharp script. Call this player two. Open it up.
now. Put this. Let's try that again. Open it up. Now that we have player two, we're going to go into player one. We're going to copy everything underneath player class. Uh, public class player one. So copy this. Make sure not to get the last open bracket. Leave that out. Control C. And then paste it in the same area here. That way you don't mess with the class name and you don't create an extra curly bracket. Basically all we're doing here is changing the key codes. So we're gonna do, instead of W, we're gonna do up arrow. And down here, instead of S, we're gonna do down arrow. Nice. Make sure to save, go back to the project. So now that we have player two, we're gonna add that rigid body component again. But to make things easier for us, we're going to go down here. The rigid body, go to the gear in the top right, copy component. We're gonna to go to player two. We're gonna right click under add up. We're gonna add a rigid body, my bad. And then we're gonna hit the gear and do paste component values. That way it does exactly what we just did. So we can make sure we didn't accidentally leave anything out. And now we attach the player two script and set the uh, speed to eight, just like player one. And now if you try the keyboard, uh, up and down arrows and the W and S keys, they all move when you press them. So perfect. Next episode, we'll talk about the ball and how to get that moving. But until then, thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.